So this question is really easy to answer and the answer is yes, you can use the M2 MacBook Air for music production and if that was the only thing you wanted to know, you can just take out your credit card, go to the description for affiliate links and order it. But who am I to say that? Why should you believe me? Well, I have a bunch of videos on this channel where I show off how the M1 MacBook Pro works. And in one of the videos, I test Logic Pro X with the Serum Synthesizer with high settings, detuned, and I managed to get around 80 tracks or so playing at the same time. So that's on the M1 macbook pro and i have a playlist with that and should appear up here at the top we have established already that the m1 based macs are good for music production so what are the important differences between m1 and m2 so as apple says the goal with m2 was refinement and it's all about power efficiency it's not necessarily about a breakthrough again so the m2 cpu is a little bit more performing with the same power requirements you could say. The M2 chip supports up to 24 gigabytes of memory so you can configure the M2 MacBook Air with 24 gigabytes for an extra $400 at the filming of this video and the M2 doubles the memory bandwidth a thousand gigabytes per second compared to 500 gigabytes per second on the M1. You also get four high performance cores and four high efficiency cores however Apple claims that the efficiency cores are vastly improved over the M1. So with the M2 you get an 18% overall faster CPU and with the two extra GPU cores you can configure the graphics are 35% faster compared to the M1. You also get a high impedance headphone outlet so you don't have to bring your audio interface for the in product in the box production on the road so you can connect your high impedance headphones directly to your MacBook Air. Storage, you can configure it up to two terabytes of SSD storage and the SSD storage on Apple laptops is really fast. One thing you have to remember is that the existence of the M2 chip doesn't automatically make the M1 chip a bad product. In fact, Apple still sells their M1 MacBook Air for a uh, cheaper price. Now is uh, a good entry into the Apple ecosystem if you want to try the ARM CPUs. And I'm sure you can find some good deals on an M1 based computer on the used market. The M1, as we have seen on my channel, as I have seen with tests, as other YouTubers have said, it's still a great CPU to use for music production and I use it all day. I would like to check out the M2 MacBook Air though, especially the midnight colored version you saw in the thumbnail of this video. It looks really nice. I, I really like this dark blue color, I think it is. But I am just a small YouTuber, so I have to buy everything I use. And until I get a little bit bigger, you can help out by liking the video and sharing it with others and maybe buying your MacBook Air with the link uh, in the description below. As I said in the video where I talked about the Mac Studio, uh, there's a question, how much computer do you really need? Do you really need to buy the M2 MacBook Air? I get questions and comments all the time where you're asking this. Uh, if that CPU is good for music production, is that laptop good, is that computer good, and is this Mac good? And I understand why you're asking, because there are so many choices out there, there are so many YouTubers out there testing different things, have des different testing methodology, and difficult to compare, you know. Uh, but the boring answer is it depends on what type of workload you are planning to do. So you have to know what kind of instruments, what kind of software you use, and you have to go from that. That's the easy uh, answer. And I think a lot of people overestimate what they truly need. I know people to this day in a professional setting, they use Macs with hot and uh, slow Intel CPUs from 2014, but it gets the job done. And it gets food on the table. It gets the client's uh, work done and that's good enough. So if you have an audio interface, if you have a microphone, a guitar, you just want to record your vocals, maybe a few tracks, maybe some effects, maybe a loops here and there. You don't need a top spec Mac Studio or a Mac Pro or a 16 inch MacBook Pro or a 14 inch MacBook Pro for that type of work. You could use a Mac Mini, you can use the M2 MacBook Air, you could use the M1 MacBook Air and it's more enough for that type of workflow for just that type of work and you can I mean 
if you saw my M1 video, I can use 80 serum tracks. And I also have a few videos where I show actually real tracks, not just uh, 80 synthesizers. That not It's not really a realistic test. So check out the playlist I showed uh, earlier. That type of workflow is almost no problem for any type of Mac on sale today. You could even do that on an iPad nowadays. I just wanted to get that out of the way because a lot of people believe that they need a lot of expensive gear to get started with music production. Well, you could say that Apple ha is expensive. Yes, they are expensive, but I mean, in Apple you also have this kind of you have the Mac Pro on the top here, or maybe it's the Mac Studio now and the display and everything. And you go down and you have the MacBook Air and the Mac Mini, which, which are the cheapest one. And they are perfectly fine for almost all type of use. And if you plan to use Logic Pro X, which I highly recommend because of everything it includes in the box and everything included is of course optimized for the M CPUs, you are just golden and you can start working right away. And what I like with the Apple software, and I, I hope they don't go this way, is that I bought Logic five, I think six years ago. It was a little bit expensive. I think it costs around $300 or maybe it was around $350. And I haven't paid anything more. I don't pay like $20 a month. I don't don't like subscription models. And please, if someone on Apple sees this, don't send me any Macs, don't send me anything. Just don't start with subscription services on your apps. Don't do it, please. We have enough of subscription services already. So this almost became a ranting video. Uh, if you use something else like Ableton, the latest version of Ableton, it's optimized and should work really well on the M-based CPUs. And what you need to look out for is software that is not optimized for the M CPU. And if that's the case, the performance may suffer a little bit. However, most serious software companies are having optimized software for the M CPUs, and it's not like they have a choice. Apple is moving over here and the others have to follow. So what do you use for music production? Are you going to get the M2 MacBook Air? Leave a comment below. And with that said, I say thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care and goodbye.